All right, so you may have wondered um, earlier in this course why the simplex method is called the simplex method since uh, we haven't even defined what a simplex is and yet we've uh, already derived the simplex algorithm and you know we've proved that it uh, that it works and so on. So a simplex in two dimensions is a triangle. Okay? In three dimensions a simplex is a tetrahedron. Okay? In n dimensions a simplex is a polytope with n plus one extreme points. Okay. And having defined the simplex, it still doesn't look like it has anything to do with the simplex method. So, um, okay, but in a few minutes you'll see why, um, why it's called the simplex method. So, you may remember I told you before that when Danzig invented the simplex method, it looked like a stupid method to him. Because you're going all the way around a polyhedron, right? And that seems stupid. You ought to go through the middle and just get to the optimum. Okay? So he didn't even implement it. It didn't look like a good idea. He didn't implement it. Uh, other people came up with algorithms, von Neumann, other people. Tried them. They were all disasters. So after a year, year and a half, Danzig was getting kind of desperate and he thought about this algorithm that he had invented before. But this time he thought of it in a totally different geometry. Okay? He had been thinking um, of the simplex algorithm as moving along from vertex to vertex in a polyhedron. But this time, he visualized it in a totally different space. So let's look at this problem. You minimize c dot x, ax equals b, x non-negative. There's one other constraint which um, we don't usually have in a linear program, and that's that the sum of the variables equals 1. But as long as you can put upper bounds on all the variables, and you throw in a slack variable, there's really no loss in generality in putting this constraint in as well. So in this geometry, what is the um, what is the linear programming problem? Well, you have these columns of the matrix A, right? And here's one column of the matrix A, A um, dot J, right? And associated with that column. Is, right, is a cost coefficient cj. And what you're asked to do here is, um, what is ax? ax is just a weighted sum of the columns of A. And the weights are non-negative, and they add up to 1. Well, that's a convex combination. So this is really saying, find me a convex combination of the columns of A okay, that add up to B and have as small an objective function value as possible. Okay. So in this geometry, we think of the columns of A as points. Okay. And we'll imagine the floor here as Rn. Okay. It's just really R2, but we'll imagine it's Rn. And we reserve the vertical dimension for this coefficient here. Okay? So each one of you is now a column. Okay? Okay? Look, look at where your feet touch the floor. Okay? Okay? That's, that's a point in Rn. So now I need you guys to stand up. And some of you actually should sit down. Some of you should stand up on the desk. I need you guys to be very different heights. Okay? So some of you scooch down like this. Some of you stand up tall. Okay? <laughs> okay. So what we need is, well, you're going to need one person to be a very special column. We need one person to be B, the right-hand side. OK? 
Okay, so I've got something for them. Okay, you'll 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 <laughs> go like this. Okay, um, I, I, you're a good choice here. Yeah, here you go. Now you have to just hold, yeah. Okay, don't don't move that. That's that's our target. Okay, so what is a feasible basic solution? A feasible basic solution is going to be. Um, in this case, because our ends really are two, it's going to be three columns, three of you guys, okay, such that you can take a convex combination of you three guys and you'll contain that target B. Okay? So for example, if I took U3, okay, then the range of B's I could get would just be in here. Mm -hmm. All right? Well, that's no good. Okay, that won't be feasible. But would like one of you like to volunteer to be in the bases? Sure. Okay, so you'll we'll, we'll make you in the bases. Okay, so let's see. We're, you're going to need some elastic stuff. So I brought some elastic stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, here, hold one end of that. Okay, somebody else is going to get the other end. And, okay, I've got two more elastic things here. All right, let's see. Uh, um, let's see. Would you like to be in the bases? Sure. Sure. Okay. So let's see if this stretches far enough. If it doesn't, I'll give you the other one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. Now, we need one more person to be in the bases, and it has to be a person who is going to make, right, the convex combination, a convex combination with these two points that contains B, right? So, um, you look like a good, good choice. Okay. All right, now you're going to have to hold a second elastic. Oh boy, this is a long one. Okay, here, hold on to that one too. And, uh, okay, if you could pass that, pass that down. Okay. Yeah. And if you would hold on to this as well. And if you guys could pass this down. Okay, there we go. I hope that stretches far enough. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, my, my, okay, good. My son wasn't happy that I used up all the rubber bands. <laughs> okay, so now we have a basic feasible solution. We see the three basic um, variables. This, this column from A, this column from A, that column from A. And do you see the simplex? Okay, see the triangle that they make? Right? That's, that's the simplex of the simplex method. Now what we'd like to do is see if there would be a different variable that could come into the basis that would give us a better objective function value. We're minimizing c dot x, right? Okay. So your height, let's think about how, how far your head is from the ground. Okay. That's cj for you, right? So right now, what's the objective function value? Excuse me a second. What's the objective function value of the solution we have? Okay, it is. Sorry. Um, this height right here. See the height of my finger? Okay, that's the objective function value we have so far. In fact, if you'll just lower this a teeny bit, you can see that the top of that. That's the, that's the present objective function value. Right? So, who has a good reduced cost? Well, let's see what the reduced costs are. Okay, so the reduced costs, we all know the formula for reduced costs, okay? Right? It's uh, CJ minus CB B inverse A dot J, right? But in this case, we need to change our notation a tiny bit because. This, bait, this letter A isn't the whole set of constraints because there's this extra constraint here. So I'm just going to define A hat to equal A with a bunch of ones underneath it. Okay, slightly bigger matrix. Okay, and B hat will be the submatrix of A. So, with this notation here, so what's CJ? Just think about yourself. What's your CJ? It's your height, right? 
Okay, what's this guy? Well, what we need is, we need, it turns out to be, let me just tell you what it is, and then we'll see algebraically why it is. Okay, it's, look at this plane, it's really a hyperplane in general, right? Look at the hyperplane defined by this simplex. Okay, you see it? Okay, so now just imagine that. Now, some of you, like you over there, okay, you're higher than that plane. Right? Okay? Some people, like you, you're lower than that plane, right? Okay? The distance from you to that plane, the vertical distance, is your reduced cost. Okay? CJ, your height, this is the height of the point on the plane that's directly above or below you. Okay? Actually, let's continue with the uh, the geometry of it, and then if we have uh, time, I'll do the derivation for you, which is very simple. But I want to make sure everybody sees what a pivot is, because that's the strangest term in the simplex method, is a pivot. All right, so let's find somebody who has a good reduced cost. Okay, so that has to be somebody who's underneath. Right? Okay. Well, you look like you have a good reduced cost. <laughs> All right. Here's, here's our entering variable, right here. Okay. Now, who's going to leave the basis? That's right. Why? Because when we pick an entering variable, there's only one choice of an exiting variable that keeps us feasible, that keeps our wonderful right-hand side here inside the simplex. Right? Okay. So, you're going to exit the basis. And what will happen is, we're going to change our simplex from this simplex, right, to this simplex. Okay? Now, just a second. Don't, don't grab it yet, because I'm going to move it back. For, for, I'm going to take it away from you for a second. Now, I want everybody to watch this, mov this movement. Okay? We were at this simplex here, right? And we move it down to be this simplex here. Okay? What you, what you see is, that rubber band over there isn't moving. Okay? This whole simplex is pivoting on that rubber band there. Right? That's what a pivot is. One, right? Okay? It's pivoting from here to here. In higher dimensions, that wouldn't be just a single rubber band. Okay? It would be, it would be a whole lower dimensional um, simplex. Okay? And you're just taking one point, and you're keeping everything else fixed, and you're pivoting down to here. Okay? Now, hold on to that. Now look at how good our new solution is. Okay? Can you lower that to be the height where this simplex uh, lower? Lower, 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 lower. That's right. Okay. See how much our objective function improved? Okay. All right, let's pick somebody else to enter the basis. Um, who else has a good reduced cost? You have a great reduced cost. Okay, so who's going to leave the basis? Uh, no, if you leave the basis, we're infeasible, right? If he leaves the basis, then no, we'd be infeasible. So actually, the variable that just entered the basis is going to have to leave the basis, okay? <laughs> And we pivot over to here. You hold on to these two ends. That's great. Okay? And you see now that um, you need to lower, the, lower that some more. Right? Okay? You see we're in a better solution. Um, okay, let's see. Who else has a good reduced cost? Who, who at this point is underneath? See the, the weird tilted plane now that's defined? Uh, ah, yes, yes, yeah, you're, that's great. Okay, so who leaves the basis? I do. Right? Okay, go ahead and pivot over, pivot the simplex over to there. Okay? And now you'll need to lower that even more. Right, there you go. Okay? Now are we optimal? Is there anybody whose head is below the plane that's defined by this simplex here? No? Nope. Okay, we are now optimal. Okay? And 
the reason that Danzig thought, oh, this might be a good algorithm after all, is because it looks like what you do is you take kind of the, the n plus 1 lowest points, you bring them into the basis, and bang, there you are. Okay? In this geometry, instead of painfully going from one extreme point to an adjacent one, to an adjacent one, to an adjacent one, and finally getting to the other side of the polytope, it looks like no matter what you start with, you're going to bring in the really low points, right? And if you've got n plus 1 points, well, then after n plus 1 iterations, you have a pretty good chance of being optimal, right? Okay? So this is why Danzig actually tried out the simplex method. It turned out to work fabulously well. And, okay. and it's because of this geometry. Okay? All right. You guys did great. And uh, now you should understand why it's called the simplex method. And you should understand why a pivot is called a pivot.